<laughs> so uh, yeah, my name's Craig Dean. I'm the Global Youth Education and Training Specialist with the Norwegian FG Council. Uh, Kristen has very kindly asked me to come and 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 join you today. Uh, we came up this with this youth what's their problem, and uh, hopefully that question will actually change when as we get to the end of the the call. But I'll keep that as a uh, as a I don't know what that is as a something to be excited about. Um, um, I'm so happy that we have um, some of the young people that we've been working with this year as youth advocates from NRC supported programs. Um, I will, is Emmanuel, are you still with us? Can you introduce yourself, please? That's all about me. If you just, we're just losing you a bit, Emmanuel. If you could just maybe start again, please. I'm saying my name is. Okay, we we're losing you a bit, but it was clear yeah. before, and I, I'm sure we'll <laughs> come. It will come back again. Um, Emmanuel is from the DRC. He's living in a refugee camp in Ethiopia. Um, and then we have uh, Sarafina. Are you there, Sarafina? Can you hear us? Can you introduce yourself, please? Yeah. My name is a little bit uh, difficult because I don't know. Is it because it's the hospital network or the school or what? I don't know. But um, my name is Yom Sarafina. I'm from Bor, especially South Sudan. And I'm a, uh, a returning from Uganda. That's the western part of Uganda in um, Rhino Farm. Thanks, Serafina. And we'll hear more from you later also. And I can't believe you're calling from the hospital. <laughs> I hope you are really OK. If you're not able to join, that's uh, really not a problem. Um, I was just asking people uh, uh, to, in general, just maybe you can just type who you are, which organization you're with, what's your role. Um, that'll be helpful for the young people. Um, I will start with um, this, this video, which is um, a bit more um, Yeah, structured. Uh, so this is something we've been doing for the last couple of years where, uh, oh, just need to make sure the sound is on. Yes, um, where we've been linking um, youth from our programs to Jan Eglund, the NRC Secretary General for a, an open conversation. Um, uh, over an hour and this year we also had representatives from the Global Business Coalition for Education who helped mobilize funding for education projects and uh, a journalist from Tortoise Media to help amplify the messages the young people had. So this is just a short video and here we go. We have too often neglected the youth who, who uh, and we don't see the potential and we don't um, we have too often neglected the youth who, who uh, and we don't see the potential and we don't listen to them. So today we will listen. I was working in youth center as a youth worker with Ukrainians for one year. I have seen how Ukrainian community was built in Romania. 
people not just single refugees anymore people group of people with common ideas at least if our parents were not educated then we the students at least we should be in position to go to school so that uh, we can be in position to change our society to change our country what is the best way that to invest in youth so that they can work the biggest challenge they have it is financial support if there is like micro financial which can support those people who are able to work the greatest uh support that i got was joining the vocational uh, vocational center being supported by nrc you know you want to change our reality like what can i do to help you change your reality que sigan eh, apoyándonos que sigan teniendo fe en la juventud porque esos son los procesos que hacen un cambio a la realidad we have power we have capacity to work but we need financial support we need educational teachers who can teach and train those youth it's helpful to sort of connect back to the stories that we're trying to persuade the business community to support to understand to um to see truly as a business imperative we don't invest in education job creation and employment including through microfinance and new technology will not succeed uh, as a society really so we will do that hoy me siento de ser escuchada me siento feliz pero necesitamos que los adultos la comunidad internacional y el gobierno hagan parte de sus decisiones necesitamos escuelas conectadas y alejadas del conflicto armado Okay, so that's going to start it just to set the framing of what young people have been talking about, advocating for. Um, <clears throat> but today it, it was around getting tips for, for meaningfully engaging young people in, in our response. So um, to do that, I think the most important thing is to be willing to give space to young people to sit down and listen to them and understand their the priorities, understand their capacities and, and find solutions to the, the issues that they want to work on. Um, so in that spirit, I was wondering, uh, we, we have um, Emmanuel from DRC living as a refugee in Ethiopia, and we have Sarafina who's living in South Sudan, who was a refugee in Uganda and has returned back to, to South Sudan. Uh, both of them are active in their communities uh they have some fantastic insights uh into life of displacement so do you have questions for them i was hoping it would be an informal conversation so let me come to the uh the the the, the community here what would you like to ask sarafina and emmanuel um and we'll start there You know, I have questions, Craig. I always have questions, um, but I don't really know how to phrase it um, because when we were talking before the session and I was saying to you, um, I, sometimes I find um, engaging youth in um, displacement settings, like the youth group, I find them um, in intimidating. I don't I, I don't really I don't know how to I don't know you know how to make myself approachable maybe to to the youth how to engage them what should be different from engaging youth um you know for engaging the children and the grown-ups the, the adults the the elderly what should we do differently and um you told me you're probably intimidated because you know they will be telling you the truth Kristen. <laughs> so i hope now that they will tell me the truth like what should we do differently um when we want to engage with youth and we want to get their their input into um, how to do programming better. OK, so let Alex welcome. Alex is also a youth advocate from South Sudan living in Juba. So let me come straight to you, Alex. 
<laughs> put you on the spot. Uh, what should INGOs, the UN agencies, humanitarian actors do to better engage young people in their in their work? Oh, Greg, pardon, I didn't get that last statement. <laughs> okay, big hold one. on. We're going to see uh, if Alex's mic is working. Alex, is your mic working? You're on mute. Yeah, you need to unmute, please. It's the video. Alex, if you are there, we'll come to Sarafina then. Sarafina, the question is, how should organisations, what should organisations do differently to better engage young people in their work? Okay. Um, actually, there are so many various ways that youth could be helped to get, engage, get engaged. One of them is like, for example, if the things like conferences or any trainings concerning the youth, how to upgroom their youth, those are at least a few that the youth should be engaged in. Okay, so any training opportunities that are available, um, any any platforms where organizations are. are uh, advocating but the problem is young people are so outspoken and they uh, so confrontational all of the time so you know how can they really work with young people when they don't know what they're going to say or they might be challenging those organizations saying that their work is not good enough nrc's training is not good enough and they're in front of donors so how how, how do you manage those fears that uh, Kristen was mentioning of not really knowing how to find that common space to have a an open conversation with young people and to jointly advocate in those conferences. Um, uh, OK, personally, what I would say is that, you know, the youth do not believe in what others do. So most of the time, it is the best thing is to at least a few youth that know the importance of youth advocacy should be the ones to reach their fellow youth and at least do the campaigns. And after the campaigns, that's when it will be more easier for the the NGOs to at least carry out what they were supposed to do. Yeah. Okay, so I'm kind of hearing have sustained support for young people to help develop their skills as advocates and then bring them into those uh, public spaces with them, not just dropping them in at a one-off event or not linked to a program or ongoing support. Uh, um, Emmanuel, let's test your connection. Can we hear from you? What, what's your suggestions in a you know, I know you've been a community leader, for example, um, and you, you're a person living with a disability, for example. So what has helped you from organisations for you to be engaged in those decision making spaces? Can you hear us OK, Emmanuel? If you could unmute your microphone, you're on mute at the moment. Yeah, and keep going. That? Yes, we can hear you. Do you? Do you? Yeah. The bit. 
it is just to give a youth a time, time to understand them because most of you, they have capability and they can do something. But before you start support them, you, you should understand what they need, what they can do. After that one, if you hear what they need, they are capable to do, you can support them. Because you can't support someone where you don't know his need, his So the it is to give youth time and understand support them where you know what they need and what they are capable to do. That's the best way I see which can help to uh, to engage the youth. But there's so many young people. I mean, how many young people no, are living you get me? in? Uh, yes. How many young people uh, are living in uh, Shikoli, uh, in the in the camp that you're in in uh, Ethiopia? How do you understand the needs of all of those young people? Are they, they are more. Uh, uh, they, I know the young people in in, in, in uh, Shikoli or other countries. They are more what you said to do something, but to do that, thing, they should express their feeling and what they are happy to do. And if you had what they need to do, you can start from that one. And that's the best way. And through that one, the youth talk, uh, the youth people who are in from are the one who knows the we can to let you know and the understanding of the youth. OK, thank you, Emmanuel. The line is jumping, no. but I think we got the most of your suggestions mm. there and really spending time yeah. to understand capacities yeah. of youth, spending time to really understand what they need and then start the, 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 the interventions that organisations yeah um uh are, are planning um so alex we, yes we would like to hear from you and if you can introduce yourself i think you've turned your camera around so we can see your shoes now and the floor but if you could yeah now we can see you if you can unmute your microphone also and then share your wisdom and uh, inspire us Uh, you, you still need to unmute your microphone. Not yet. Yeah, you still need to. Yes, Hi. we have you. So if you introduce yourself. And then, yeah. Yeah, I'm um, Kole Alex Kemis, a Mica from South Sudan, Juba. Uh, in the first place, I will give thanks to the organizers for now for this uh, program. Even though we have stayed for a little bit time without coming together, but I, I am very impressed when we can share ideas like this. Uh, in where I am, <clears throat> First, I give thanks to NRC uh, staffs for bringing us down and also in supporting of the youth, more especially who are loitering outside uh, without any jobs. Um, many youths, they are there, they are energetic youths, but only what is lacking right now, it is uh, the creativity or the, uh, the vocational trainings that they do not actually have that access uh, into the areas of where they are supposed to do. But in terms of energy, they are having the energy. Secondly, I will also request a kind of uh, understanding between more especially the NGOs and the maybe uh, other organs, more especially to join hands with the government so that let them have that collaboration for them to access up to the village level. Because 
For now, more especially, very many youths that are squeezed only in Juba. But there are those who are, who are outside there, even no schools. They are just staying, doing nothing. But they are able of doing everything that they, they can do. But there is no access for them. So when I'm seeing people sharing ideas like this, and uh, I feel good, because I know it's very simple to mobilize them. But to mobilize them, it needs something that also will make them busy. So I will just urge uh, our international uh, organization and uh, the national organization, more special, and even government agencies to join hands so that they can be in position to meet all uh, the youths in different areas. So, so that is the thing that right now I will share with you. So, but Alex, if you were a uh, NRC staff in Juba, and you're seeing these youth that you say are loitering on the streets. Uh, maybe, you know, maybe some of the people in the community are saying those youth are trouble. You can't do anything with those. Let's only work with the young people who have completed secondary school or something like this, right? So if you were the NRC staff trying to work with those loitering youth causing all of that trouble what would you do to engage them and to leverage that energy that you say young people have in juba yeah as uh right now uh because we have to talk something that uh we are all seeing with our eyes youths it is very easy to bring them down it is very easy to mobilize them but now it needs a kind of a program. Now, like when we talk of maybe trainings, if organizations are able to, 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 to support, then it is very easy to bring them down. We shall mobilize them, we shall call them, and we mentor them with the program that is needed. It is very easy for them to understand. But uh, it needs also, as I said, it needs a kind of little support maybe from the government, because the government is in position to enforce some of the activities. Yeah. We have other issues like gangs, mm -hmm. that one needs a kind of help from government so that they can I work can together. Mm. Thanks, yeah, Manuel, I think you want to add on to what Alex is saying? Yeah. Uh, what I want to add on this one, really international community and the government who stand for youth, they should try their best to support youth, especially in the refugee content. You may see young people who are sitting idle in the camp or in another areas who are able to do something, who need to build their future. But due to the, to that limitation, financial support, uh, even a limitation of free movement, it's a big challenge to the people. So we need this voice to be heard with other people who can take decision to see those future of our world, which is dying inside the, the, the camps or in, in another place, to see what can be done even I may say urgently, because in this generation we are in, it's a big problem to see more than a million of youth who are in different camps who can't do anything, just who are sitting, depending to other people. And if they get support, they can work and they can build their future. That's what I want to, to add. Thank you. So I'm hearing a few things here um, about um so i think alex you were kind of talking out the way you were expressing is it's easy for you as a young person to mobilize other young people into trainings and to create awareness and to to, to if they are available so it's almost like there's there's a, a lack of services and a lack of collaboration with the local authorities to sustain that uh, intervention with youth and then Emmanuel, I think you're also highlighting um, the restrictive environment that displaced youth 
uh, feeling in like yourself. I know there is no freedom of movement outside of the camp. And this is something that is fundamentally limiting and challenging to your or your your the as a daily barrier that you have to come over as a young person with looking about the future and the hope. So there's also this systemic challenges that youth are facing, uh, which you're saying kind of millions of young people around the world. So to what extent are organizations willing to be that voice to tackle those fundamental barriers that refugees face, not just at the design of a service in a camp, for example. Um, Maybe I'll just before I come for some more questions from sure. uh, people in, in the room and maybe if you have any specific examples of challenges you faced in engaging young people uh, from for, uh, from an organizational perspective, maybe Sarafina, is there anything that you want to add to what we've uh, heard already? Um, I know that you have been a very active uh a uh, young person in the community and you faced a number of challenges because you're a woman. Uh, so is there anything you want to add or share about uh, those, how you've overcome those challenges and what has been helpful for organizations to, 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 to collaborate with you? Yeah, actually, uh, I'll just uh, stick to the challenges because everything has been exhausted by my colleagues. Um, there are a lot of uh, challenges that I do face, especially when I'm trying to do the advocacy. I remember there was a video that I shared with you, Greg. In that video, okay, while collecting the information, I went through a lot because people will be like, why do you want to use this uh, school or why do you want to use this area for your video coverage? And whenever I tell them that it's a use advocacy, <laughs> And it's only focused on uh, better education. They would be like, is that education for girls or for boys? When I say it's actually gender balance, they'll be like, then why is it that it's a girl that is collecting the information? Why, why is it that there was no um, uh, gentleman or any other uh, gender apart from female doing this? So whenever I tell them that it's just gender balance, so I can do it, and my fellow male uh, can do it. So it's me who has taken over that, and next time it might be the male. Majority of them took it uh, personal. I was actually denied some uh, schools and some de distracted uh, facil facil uh, facilitations because I was a I female. They never expected me to do it. They actually just want to be the ones doing it, especially the boys. And then uh, recently, but on on that point, Sarafina. So, but you succeeded. Uh, we we yeah, will share the video. We will share the video uh, now. But what what support uh, did you receive, if any, or was it just your own determination that allowed you to succeed, or was there something support that also uh, and it allowed you to succeed? Um, there was no support. It was only my determination. And actually, first, the camera guy had to give up, but I insisted because most of the communities would be like, oh, if it's you that is using this, uh, this area, then we are sorry, we cannot allow you to do that. So it was my determination that made the video succeed, but there was no other support from the community. And then yeah. recently, I actually tried like advocating again. We tried a campaign. And I started with a secondary school here in Bar. When I actually went to the secondary school, I was focused on everyone. I told them I'm only here doing, a, so I'm just giving a recap of what the youth are supposed to be doing, other than doing other unwanted stops in the community. Majority of the youth, especially the boys, uh, refused to attend. They were like, if you want us to be part of this, that should be male. That should be at least your male followers, like, that will be talking to us privately, and then you talk to the girls privately. I told them, if this is to be based on uh, girls, I will only come for girls, but it's generally the youth. Uh, but 
to, till today, I'm still facing those challenges. The, the first school that I went to, the same thing, second school, and uh, probably if I'm out of the hospital, I will be going to, to the next school. I might face the same things, yeah. And, and, and what support would you like from <laughs> organizations like NRC or the other INGOs who are operating in South Sudan? What is, what is it they can do to actually support you? Or do you not need their support? Does that make it more difficult? Um, you know, here in South Sudan, especially Bar, uh, they do believe in things like anything concerning the okay, anything that is attached to NGOs. So most of the time, the support that I would suggest is the NGOs helping us. Because, you know, these young South Sudanese love seminars. They love seminars and workshops. So I will suggest a workshops to be conducted maybe twice or once in a month, just uh, on it, uh, especially on uh, uh, grooming them, uh, grooming the youth. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Um, Emmanuel, I know you're going to cut, would like to come in. I just, if you can just hold it for the next question, I just want to uh, share the video which Sarafina produced. And this was shown at the Education Cannot Wait Executive Committee meeting in, in Norway. In 2020, South Sudan was, this, was affected by natural yeah. disasters, uh, especially flooding, under which a big number of South Sudanese were displaced from their homelands, especially in Jongle State. Uh, the locals were displaced from their homes and they also had abandoned uh, places like schools, for example, Madingbor uh, Girls uh, Grammar School, which was abandoned due to flooding and also was one of the schools affected by flooding, where the school compound was also flooded, leading to a lot of destructions, where the school facilities were destroyed. Uh, the school lost a lot, and from the year 2020, to 2023, the school has not been functioning due to these natural disasters. It has also led to uh, a lot of uh, dropouts, especially in this school, where because it's no longer uh, operating, the girls who were, be, who were in this school have uh, decided to resort into staying, because majority of them are displaced from their homelands and uh, and resettled in. Uh, some IDP schools. Okay. I think, uh, sorry, just get my technology. I'm going to give a round of applause to Sarafina for her work on that one. Uh, okay. Any other questions uh, that people have in the, uh, in the room? Uh, okay. Sorry, I didn't see the chat there. Um, okay, there's lots of questions. Sorry, I didn't see those. I've been... Uh, okay, let me see. Um, okay, so let me come to Emmanuel um, in the first one. How do you feel that and so, Emmanuel, how do you feel that humanitarians, so uh, organizations like uh, the UN agencies and INGOs, can listen more effectively to youth? We usually focus on adults, is the question. And that's from uh, Bad uh, 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 Tom, sorry. <coughs> so, how can humanitarians? <laughs> Listen more effectively. There is this. Yeah, there is a there is a different way, but uh, is way especially in the content of refugee or in the camp. There is a mass camp. There is a meeting. There is a meeting. During the meeting, they can hear. They can hear what the youth need, and uh, they can 
even they can use, for instance, they can use this youth advocacy platform to hear what we are saying. And from that one, they can understand what can be done. That's what I understand on that. Thank you. Um, then I'll come to you, Alex, for this second question. Yeah. Um, how did you first get involved in this program and in, in the Youth Advocates work? And what convinced you to spend time on these activities? Because I should say also that the young people are covering their own costs and time for this. Uh, unfortunately, we don't have funding for to, 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 more sus, to sustain it in a more uh, meaningful way even. Um, so Alex, why are you wasting your time joining these calls with these people in this uh, Teams meeting, using your valuable data? <laughs> okay, thank and you. And how did question. you get involved? <laughs> yeah. Uh, first of all, uh, NRC is one of the organizations that uh, uh, it normally also have the responsibility in uh, catering and looking for this place and also refugees people, IDPs. I think these are some of the uh, responsibilities or duties NRC is looking at. Two, I am one of the youth who also face a lot of challenges and who goes through all this. That's why it has made me, when NRC is concerned with the refugees, then I, I fall among, I fall among one of the refugees at the same time, one of the displaced person. Another thing is, it comes now to the youth. You know, what made me convinced, because these programs, they are all concerned with the youth and uh, concern with the issues youths they are facing in South Sudan. That's why I feel good because we are talking or we are handling issues of youths and I'm also one of them. That's why I know that we as youths, we need to talk to ourselves <coughs> and we need to mentor ourselves. There is no one that we shall be calling from above only. We are only need the support. But when it comes to implementation, then we who are on the ground, we have to be responsible and we have to be involved in that responsibility. This is one of the issues that made me to, 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 to continue sharing my ideas uh, with you, more especially uh, uh, the NRC staff. And also it falls that I am one of the beneficiaries from NRC because I benefited from them because of their services. Only I will request that their services should continue in supporting youths because we have youths that right now that are unable to go to school. But with the little vocational trainings, at least I am seeing some of us, we are very busy uh, and we are involved in the other activities that at least we are now benefiting. We are not now also involved in these issues of these gangs and the other things like we are doing nothing. So my last message is, I am calling for many NGOs, not only NGOs, and even other powerful government agencies to come down and think about youth, what youth are supposed to do, or what is needed from them, and what the NGOs and the government agencies are supposed to do to them. We don't need money, but we need services, or we need support, trainings, these are the things that we need so that we can be in position to work for ourselves. Thank you for that. Well said, Alex. And I think the last update we got from Alex on the WhatsApp group is he's working with the, uh, well, you, maybe you tell uh, briefly, Alex, about the work you're doing with the border border drivers and with the Council of Juba. Yeah. Uh, uh, coming to where I am right now, because this is one of the uh, part of governmental work, uh, that one we are at least helping border borders riders because of no opportunities. Very many youths, they are only involved in, in border border work. So that is one of the area that at least it covers a number of youths. And I will add like if there is also another department that will take another number of youths like border border, then 
we have less in criminal activities because everyone will be busy doing his and 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 hustling for the whole day. The work that we are doing because right now we have a lot of issues that are happening within the city. Uh, but about the riders, they have been killed. The, their motorbikes sometimes they have been stolen. Even even though you park inside, you will just find someone has taken that one already. That's why we have come up with the different policies here, like how uh, these border waters can recover their motorbikes. So we have other system, like we have a tracking device that when you lost your motorbike, we normally look into that and we easily track for you. We can get for you your bike. Two, we have a lot of accidents that are happening due to uh, 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 drivers that sometimes they drive while they are drunk they end up making a lot of accidents. So we have to uh, uh, call one of the insurance company to come and work with us so that we can be in position to cover the losses of these border water guys, more especially when it happens like accident. When it happens accident, two things involved, like you can be injured and your motorbike can maybe get spoiled. <laughs> so we make sure that the company is responsible in uh, in covering the losses because there is a, 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 a there is a due or a money for subscription you pay then after when something happened to you we are responsible for that mm -hmm. even if you lost your bike we are responsible in getting for you a, a, a percentage of your money so that you can get another one so that you will be busy so that you will not involve yourself into other wrongly activities that are happening with you mm -hmm. Thank you, it Alex. Is part of so, tax, it is part of taxation for the government. Thank you for your time. Yeah, thanks, Alex. It's and I think this is also an important point. Getting to the spoiler of how you are contributing to the wider community. You're not just looking after yourself or your livelihoods, but you're <laughs> making a key, playing a key role in your your own community there for for, for everyone. Um, the last question we have is for you, Sarafina, and I will come back to you, Emmanuel. I'll give you the last word. Um, but uh, for Sarafina, the last question we have, what about evolving local and youth organizations? Do you have experience with that to share with us? Um, this is for for. For, for, for Lana, if I got your name wrong, sorry. Uh, so, Sarafina, you uh, have been in the process of setting up your own organization. So, uh, how, how has your experience of that been? And what more support can organizations uh, provide to you? Um, I actually have a little experience because uh, most of the time I was only on my side. And the only support that I will uh, maybe urge the uh, organizations to help me with is to help with is <laughs> let me call you back. I'll, I'll be back. Let me talk to the doctor. Okay. <laughs> we have committed youth. Um, okay, Emmanuel, I was going to come to you last, but I think we'll go back to Serafina. Yes. But uh, I think from your side, the reason why I want to come last to you is because I think within your setting in the refugee camp, you have the most restrictions on on your yeah. your freedom. Okay, you have less internet. You're, you're reliant on the internet in the, the sure. vocational training center now. You have restrictions on your movement. You've been living sure. there for 12 years. Yeah. Okay. In those those in, in environments. Yeah. So what what is the last what yeah. is the message that you have for humanitarian organizations that you would like them to take away today? Yeah, for humanitarian organization, what I can tell them. It's better to see the pain of refugee who are tightened like that and do something at least to let them feel that they are human being like others. Because we may say that uh, 
our voice will be we are like voiceless imagine uh, i think you know me and you have seen me uh, all the time i was community leader i tried to advocate for the change of the youth especially in the camp situation but still seems like no change but anyone who are willing to support to build the future of those people, even including me. We can be happy, we can enjoy ourselves like others, but due to that limitation we have, we seems like we are in open prison, we can't do anything. But if we get access, we can do more. We are experienced, we can do everything, but due to the restriction you are in, we are like tighted people. So we need to be free. We need to be supported and so that we can change our life. Thank you, this is what I can say. Thank you, Emmanuel. And I think we, I was fortunate to meet Emmanuel uh, in March and I did a 40 minutes video interview with him. Emmanuel, with your permission, I will share it with this group so they could learn more about your uh, your, no your your background. And uh, Emmanuel is currently being no being being mentored by one of the NRC Global Communications team to produce his own video, uh, telling a story or he creating his own story on on uh, and he's working to finalize that and we hope to be able to amplify that so we'll, we'll share that also with Kristen. Um, let me check if Sarafina is the doctor. <laughs> oh, let, let me come back to you Sarafina, ignore that. Uh, um, so what, what I would like to share uh, finally is um, is this 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 link. So what you heard from the young people today our top tips and the good news is and that you have existing international guidelines from the interagency standing committee who i guess somehow governs or guides humanitarian actors and maybe even you see your own organization's name uh, who are part of the Global Compact for Young People and Humanitarian Action, who developed these guidelines. And I want to just, they are quite comprehensive, but there is this very helpful orientation document. And I want to share with you just three slides from that to give you a sense of what is in these guidelines and therefore hopefully how they might be useful for you and in, in, in your organizations going forward um yeah we're nearly there um so i i i i will leave you to explore in more detail um but there are three and one, the most important one of these modes of participation, which I'm sure you are all familiar with participation ladders and everything like that. But if you look today at the title of the discussion, it is uh, youth, what's their problem? Right. So this was a conversation that Kristen and I framed and not intentionally either, but this was originally framed their problem, no participation, OK? What we've done today is ask the question, what's your problem? Having them in the room to have some consultative participation, some collaborative participation together in the same space, understanding each other. and. The challenge I would say is is to look at that participation led by young people. So how, how are you really as an organization providing the funding, the training, the space uh, that young people that that Emmanuel and Alex and Sarafina have been talking about today in, in, in your in your work and, and 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 how you know you guys are the expert in this. So it's how would we get our organizations to shift along that line and and really 
invest in the capacities that we've we've heard about today. Um, and then the um, the other piece is that participation of young people and supporting their leadership throughout the humanitarian program cycle. Um, and then finally, within the guidelines, there's checklists for all sectors. OK, so it's 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 participation. It's throughout the cycle and it's for each sector and, and the guidelines cover all of those things. Um, so I will stop there. Um, and uh, Sarafina saying. And yes, this is a nice uh, how the, how Sarafina's message. I'm sorry I had to go shortly. Uh, are, are you there, Sarafina? Now, do you want to have the last word? Yeah, I am. Okay. Yeah, over to you. Um, actually, that's uh, the only support is at least updating us on what the other youth around the world are up to. At least they can share with uh, you, okay, we get updated on their challenges. And we also relate to the challenges that we are facing here in South Sudan. And when we compare the two, the, the two challenges, that's when we can come up with a better solution. Yeah. Thank you, Sarafina. Um, OK. I think we have two minutes. I realize we didn't do full participation because the young people haven't asked you any questions, Kristen, or anyone in the room. But again, I think this is about uh, having more sustained engagement and uh, we are waiting. <laughs> if you would like anybody in the call to have any further discussions or engage the, the young people here, there's a wider group of young people, including young, uh, two young people from Ukraine. Um, so yes, if it's helpful to have these conversations in your organizations, we're, we're happy to facilitate that. And if you have resources to support that more meaningful process and help resource the time the young people have given, We'd also welcome that. Thanks right. so much, Craig. Um, and thanks, Alex and Serafina and Emmanuel as well. It's amazing that you took time out of your day to to join us and um, and really advise us on how we can uh, work better together um, with you and uh, support you as as youth in displacement. Um, I I um, Put the link up to the community engagement forum here and we would be very happy if you want to join that forum where we can continue these discussions where we want to hear from you um, more advice and also questions for us. This forum is full of um, um, humanitarian practitioners that work on displacement responses and um, specifically on community engagement. So. Um, you know, it's a forum where you can ask anything and um, we share resources and we try and help each other out um, on engage, engaging displaced people. And um, I've created a specific hashtag for engaging youth so we can uh, post any question and questions and resources there. And I'll share the recording from this webinar as well as um, the resources from Craig um, on the forum there. Um, but um, yeah. I just want to say again a really really big thank you to all four of you for joining us today and and um, sharing your experiences and um, and expertise and uh, your dedication i can't believe you're calling in from the hospital Serafina. thank you <laughs> um and um yeah if you have any problems on if you want to join us in the community engagement forum and if any problems on on um, logging in or anything, just reach out to Craig and uh, he'll he'll uh, share my email address there with you. Awesome. Thank you. Have a nice day, everyone. Thank you so much. Yeah, thank you. Cheers.
Okay, thank can't you. Can't wait to see the video from Emmanuel. Thank you. Oh, yes. Thank you. Bye-bye, yeah. yeah. everyone. Thank you. Bye. Thank you, bye. Thank you so much. And, uh, yeah, if you guys can want to stay on, you're welcome to stay on. If you have any questions for Kristen, you're welcome to stay and ask them. I just know we've other people have got to leave, for example. Um, but yeah. Great job. Thank you so much for your time. It's always so lovely to hear you so energizing. You're also. I know. I'm not intimidated speakers. anymore. Are you not? No, I don't think so. That's good. We, we look at that. We should we have outcome indicator number one. <laughs> uh, Behavioral change. So I'll ask you, Kristen, on that point. What, yeah. Why are you intimidated? What 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 is what, what? Give us an example. Um. Well, I, you know when you. The first thing you want to do when you're um, meeting with a group of people, you want to find common ground. And often I feel uh, maybe because of the age gap that um, it's hard to find common ground with youth. I'm in my 40s. Um, um, I mean, there are obviously other changes, differences as well, me not being displaced, etc. But um, with youth specifically, I feel like it's difficult to find um, common ground and, and something to connect um you know connect on which i think is very important for like having a, a free and open and honest conversation and any questions alex emmanuel sarafina kristen if you need to leave no leave question. no problem <laughs> yeah no question Okay. Uh, coming to my side, actually, I don't have any questions, but I just appreciate your time for standing with the us, also reminding us we have forgotten about even uh, online discussion like this, but uh, hopefully today we made it. Thank you for all your time. Yeah. So, Chris, thank you for joining. Yeah, yeah Sarafina, yeah. any uh, questions? Yeah, I actually, you know, I've been off, on and off. Uh, uh, at least uh, I'm, not, I'm not yet uh, fully, um, not, let me just say, I've not got more information on the forum groups you are saying. Yeah. So can you share us a bit more about the, the, the community engagement forum? Yeah. So this is, um, it's a community of practice for humanitarians that work um, in displacement responses that who um, work specifically on community engagement. Um, so um, we, um, what we do is we have uh, this website where we share resources and ask each other questions, you know, would anyone have any resources on youth, for example? Um, do you have any experience in engaging youth? And then um, um, we also organize these monthly um, community coffee and chat sessions like this one on different topics under community engagement every time. Um, and um, we uh, have some other in-depth um, webinars as well that we um, organize, um, you know, where we invite panelists and have uh, kind of planned um, um, interventions that are a little bit more um, um, formal. Um, um, all of these are recorded, so I can share you know, the recordings with you if interested. We've um, had um, discussions around um, how do we engage people on the move, for example. Um, so when you're constantly in transit, um, say on the migration route from um, from Africa to Europe, etc., or in the um, through South America um, to up to uh, Central America. Um, and on um, community led projects, we've had a lot of sessions on that. Um, um, uh, and uh, and I think that is also one way of uh, really working with youth is, you know, 
um, handing over the decision making to youth groups on deciding um, what kind of community projects they would want um, um, and handing over the, the funds and the assets and letting the youth take the lead. Um, we have um, discussions around uh, how can we engage women um, better and other marginalized groups. These are just examples um, on what we do as the Community Engagement Forum. Um, but if you join through the link there in the chat, um, you'll see you'll get access to all these resources and all the discussions that we've had. So far, it's mostly in English. And you, and you join via, how do you actually join? So maybe I can, uh... I can share screen. So when you click on the, if I take the link uh, that was shared, so this is this is the link in the chat, and then uh, you're already a member, so okay. I think it will look a little bit different from you. But yeah, if you. Uh, this is okay. the page that you will get to. You scroll down and then at the when you scroll down at the bottom of the page, there's a um, there's a button that you press on saying um, um, register or um, subscribe. I don't remember. I think it's uh, register with yeah. oh. uh, the group. So you just click then, on that and then you you give your, you know, your information, so your name and and your email address. And then we encourage people to give more information as well, like your uh, location and and uh, your experience and interests when it comes to community engagement. And then there's kind of monthly calls like this one on different topics and you could join that topic. You would receive the the meeting invite by email. Um, yeah, and you don't have to join everyone or you can pick and choose which is interesting or when you're available. Yeah, yeah and when you do join, yeah. you choose which which hashtags you uh, you are interested in. So um, if you choose, for example, you know, uh, engaging youth, um, you click on that hashtag and then every time something is posted under that hashtag, you'll get an email. So you don't actually have to go back to the website and check. It will come directly to the email to your inbox. But you can join as many hashtags as you like and then you get um, um, a lot of resources into your inbox. All right. Is that OK, Sarafina? Any other questions? Nah, that's OK, but I don't have another question. All right. Well, we hope you get better, Sarafina. So Thank you for, for joining. Me, my this question week. is related to this forum. Yeah. Yes, Emmanuel. Yeah, just my question is not a big question. It's related to this forum. I think it is very interested to join them. If possible, you can assist us to, to join because I heard what they are doing is a great job. So it will be a good platform even as a youth to join it. Um, if you if you can send me their emails, um, Craig, then I can add them. They will like I think I did that with you as well. Uh, so I can yeah. add them directly. If that's OK with the three of you. Yeah, if you would like to join, then maybe uh, you send me your email on WhatsApp and I'll pass it to, to Kristen and she can add it. OK. And you can also All share right. it. I will, I will send it. Great. And you can anyone can join who is um, uh, you know working on community engagement and um, 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 like working I mean paid work or unpaid work like um, volunteering uh, whatever it is um, so you can share it with any of your friends or colleagues who also would like to join it's an open forum and if you watch Emmanuel's video okay thank you you will learn about his experience as a community leader representing multi ethnicities within mul multiple multiple nationalities in his uh, his his own. <laughs> so, right. All right. But Looking forward thanks, to seeing it. Thanks for the invite, Kristen. Uh, thanks for all your time, Alex, Serafina, Emmanuel. 
we were so grateful for you and your time. Your messages were so clear, so powerful, so energizing. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. Cheers. Bye. Bye. Thank Bye. you too. Thank you too. Thank you. Bye. Have Bye. a good day. Bye. Bye. Bye.